took a, a different route today, one we don't take as often. By the way, this is always fascinating me. Check this out. Look at that. Hold on. See that? It is a, a rabbit with a backpack. I think it's got I think it's got eggs in the basket, you know? And it's made of polystyrene and it's been here for I mean for as long as I remember. First found it like three years ago. And I was like, what the hell is that? And I don't know what is it for to be honest, because it's made of polystyrene. I guess it was a I assume it was a decoration of sort. I don't I don't really know. But it's a it's a it's a rabbit with a with a backpack that's been here for a long long time. And check this out. This is the um, uh, a large uh, pinge I was talking about last time, and we are seeing it from the other side. Yeah, and and pinge. In case you have missed, Deko, pojď pojďme to zítra tady tudyma. We're gonna gonna go through here around the edge of the forest this time. In case you missed the last video, uh, or not the last, but one of the videos I when I talked about Pinge. Um, Pinge is uh, an old uh, medieval uh, gold mine, you know, a surface gold mine where they were mining out gold. So, and that's how it looks like, you know, after centuries and after it collapsed, you know, that's how the Pinge looks like today. So, yep, that was a Pinge. Here we have another one. Yep, there's another one here. And I believe we haven't seen that one last time, actually. Yeah, that is another pinge. And is that the tree? I was thinking, is it broken or is it? Yeah, it probably just broke, but there was a dark part. I, was, I thought maybe it was stroke by a um by a lightning because i remember there was this storm once and there was an incredible loud lightning and it had definitely had to be super close because i i don't think i've ever heard a lightning this loud and it was fast you know it was like you saw the light and immediately you hear heard, heard the thunder you know so i was like oh that was definitely very very close um Anyways, that rabbit there, the police stream one, I guess it was um, some sort of a decoration. I'm not sure if it was that put there intentionally. Um, I, in any case, I, I just left it there because I was like, is someone, did someone put this on purpose here? Maybe for kids? I, I don't know. Maybe someone has it there. You know, there's this, uh, there's this. Um, it's not a habit it's like a tradition sort of where you put the eggs out in the terrain you hide there somewhere you know and then the kids go out and they have to find it so in, in uh, through in the east, uh, throughout easter right i mean it's like an easter tradition so i was thinking maybe it's that you know and if i would i mean i would throw that rabbit out you know because it's like it's like cheap sort of carved out of polystyrene now it's even like grazed and probably chewed on by some animals i'm not quite sure but yeah it's uh it's a strange thing to find in the forest for sure and here there was this uh wildfire uh took place here very weird one because as i said it's like a separate different um different hot spots where the fire seemed to occur and maybe it's normal maybe this is how the fire spreads but i would imagine it would just go on and spread evenly but it seems like it's here it's a bit here then it's a little bit over there you know it's just strange but maybe it was windy maybe that's how it happened very very strange but I'm glad they put it out um, quickly because this forest is, tends to be particularly dry and there's a lot of dead wood and a lot of 
lot of uh, 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 dry pine wood and that would just be set ablaze incredibly fast you know so I believe if it wouldn't be uh, tend to and cared off very quickly I think this whole forest would just be in ashes you know just like that very very quickly so I'm glad they stopped it soon um, and now we're gonna walk pretty openly across this across this field there's not really a path that would connect these parts of the woods that's why I don't really go here often because I want to cross these I don't want to cross these uh, fields because I don't know usually I mean if it would if it's hard after a frost and it's kind of fine but if it's like soft and uh, the mud sticks to your uh, sticks to your uh, soles of your shoes and but really the real reason why I do want to want to go cross it is because these fields are not you know they're not kept as organic you know and wow look at that see those large birds one of the videos we talked about large birds but this is god damn and now I wait I really do wish I would have my glasses with me because I can't see much <laughs> I, I see there are large birds, but I don't see the shape. Oh, they did a little circle, so they're definitely not. They're they're actually. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are birds of prey for sure. And there is. Wow, there were two birds of prey, and I suspect they had a large wingspan. And I kind of suspect because I saw. They had, and yeah, they're definitely circling. So those are birds of prey. Um. Uh, but I saw that they have a forked tail, you know, I, I, my eyesight might have made that up because it was blurry, but I actually did saw a couple of days back when we were driving, I saw one by one of the fields, not around here, but in a different region, I saw a kite, you know, and I believe I was, I was driving at the time and, but I did have my glasses on me, you know, when I'm driving, I always have them. So I, 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 I believe I did saw that it has a fork, you know, and that is a kite, which is surprising to me because I would think that kites would arrive much later on, you know, because they are migratory and they do not stay over winter. So I would expect them to be here, I don't know, March perhaps, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the soonest, you know, March, late March perhaps. But uh, I believe that was a kite. And this, these two guys, I believe those were kites too, to be honest. But I, I, I could not confirm it, unfortunately. But they are very large birds, had a different shape than a uh, buzzard would have. And they definitely flew differently than buzzards, for sure. They had like sleek, but very long wings, which is definitely something that kites do have. And originally I thought, I thought these are, you know, that's what I, why I said, you know, we talked in one of those videos, I wanted to say, we talked about herons because I really thought they were large. And I was like, is that a heron, you know, at first? Um, but nope, that was, there were, those were not herons. Those were really, ah, we have a sound there, which is, ah, see them? There's two of them. We talked about them yesterday, or actually two days ago. Those are ravens. And see, there's like one, two, three, four, five of them, six of them, which is interesting. Uh, ooh, yeah. Riku, poch, poch tady, poch deme. We came a little bit in into the field. I wanted to take it by the edge. Uh. Yeah, which is interesting, but as you can see, they do fly in groups, but you you would not see them. Oh yeah, there's some shite on the... That's exactly, yeah, yeah. I was talking about why I don't want to go into the field. See that? You know, those... Oh, sorry, I was, wasn't sure if I'm recording for a second. Uh, uh, those drops there, like these little, little sort of grainy things it's all around the field i just noticed you know it's everywhere on the field uh 
and I'm not quite sure what it is. It's definitely some chemical crap, I'm sure. And hopefully it's not a rodenticide or some poison that I would, I believe it's not the season for it. So I don't think that's the case, but I think definitely it's some sort of a chemical fertilizer. And you can see here, it is all over this part here as well. You can see all those little tiny dots. Draco, Ah, yeah, you see all those little tiny dots. Those this that's the that's the fertilizer. Draco, Drake, Draco, Tarine, yo. I trying to get Drake out of there because you know he would I'm sure he would love to start drinking this water. And that's the problem here, you know, because this here, this part you know was turned into a field but as you can see there's a lot of water and the reason why is that is because there is actually a um there is actually a uh, what do you call it you know where water gets like a uh, fool come on uh, a spring yeah there is a spring coming out of the ground you know there is actually here the the street uh, the stream that we see over there down there I, we're gonna walk by it you know uh the the creek actually starts here right in the middle of this field there is a there here is its source here is its uh a spring you know i hope that's the right term for it you know here it starts and that's why there is a lot of water here and as you could see that when you go here for instance there are tons and tons of animal prints you know hoofs and 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 paws and and whatnot because because those animals come and drink this water here you know and this water as you can see has been largely contaminated there's loads of those little granule sort of pellet whatever that is so it's been contaminated largely with this thing you know so these animals they could you don't drink that okay so those animals come here and they drink this water and I don't think that's good you know I think that is not good at all you know um, and I don't know what it is you know I guess I, I assume it's some sort of an industrial fertilizer some sort of chemical fertilizer because it's like right before spring so they probably you know pumping the plants with 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 nutrition but I don't think it's it should be in a spring water where animals come to and that the animals drink you know so yeah it's not great and actually frankly that's why i also uh sometimes think that you know i'm trying to stop drake from drinking from over that stream there probably at that point it's a little bit filtered but it's not a it's not a water that you know is great to 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 drink but all the animals from around here they come here to drink so that's pretty shitty you know but the, yeah, uh, that was the reason, and that is generally the reason I don't want to go through the fields because those are not organic fields. Because the, the farmers here, they don't farm it the, the way, ideal way that it would, that would not uh, include uh, pesticides and chemicals and other crap, you know. And they do it the uh, classical, you know, sort of communist way which uh kind of ruined uh, our environment and our farm uh, farm um uh, environments you know were ruined by this uh, system that was being done by uh by communism for decades and you know i mean it modernized in a way but i mean i see i we have a field right in front of our house and i see how they tend to these fields and they're spraying it left and right they're putting stuff like these pellets there you know it's a it's a constant sort of work where they use all sorts of chemicals and all sorts of treatments and that is the reason why i do not want to go through these fields you know i mean for me it it, it gets i mean i have boots and all that but i mean for drake you know i don't want him to you know get in there and get himself smeared and all that whatever they spray it with you know it just doesn't feel root it just doesn't feel right you know so that's why i'm always hesitant to go through the fields and there is no actual path that connects this part 
which is very beautiful and I love to uh, I love to go here at uh, from time to time but unfortunately it is not very well connected and you can only go there through through a field or by the edge of the field sort of you know sometimes we do you know for a change but uh, yeah that was that and I was talking sorry I digressed again I was talking about those birds and I initially thought because they're large and before I saw them fully before I saw their uh, flight pattern in full before I saw their mo wing movement and I recognized their shape a little bit and saw what they're doing I initially thought oh these are these are uh, herons you know but those were not herons because first of all there was no folded neck visible there uh, that would you would see right away even without glasses and their movement of the wings w was different the shape of it was different and then they started circling which you know uh, which is uh, definitely a trademark of, of, of birds of prey um, and that over there we saw rooks uh sorry rooks we saw those uh ravens you know and there was like six of them which i said yeah it's definitely happening you know it's a it's it, it is an occurrence when they're in groups but never are they in large gatherings uh like uh, rooks and and crows where you see you know like multiple hundreds you know it's usually these like smaller groups um and now Wow! Holy... You see, have you heard that? Now they are silent. Come on, you cannot see me. I'm standing right here. And I don't believe frogs would see me from like, what, 500 meters away in the forest. They stopped, man. But there were frogs. I, I've heard frogs, seriously. And they stop the moment I stop. What What the hell are we, like, is there some sort of frog telepathy? Am I a frog? <laughs> am, I, am I secretly a frog and I just send them a signal to, to, to stop um, calling or <laughs> what the hell? Ah, they're starting again. Hear that? That is so cool. So frogs are calling and, 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 and beginning their uh, breeding sort of rituals and calling females and that's that's so cool okay I was wondering when they're gonna start you know because I haven't seen any any sort of brood any eggs or or any frog at that matter at our uh, wildlife pond that we have on our garden but clearly it started here already in this in this pond over there that is very cool and I loved how they stopped. It was like, what? How, like, <laughs> what are the chances, you know? Anyways, um, so as you can see, as you could see, those were, you know, uh, those were ravens and they were in a group of about six uh, individuals. And um, this is definitely gonna be less and less uh, uh, common as the spring progresses. And actually, I think at this point, they should already start forming pairs or forming pairs i mean they they form lifelong pairs so therefore they already have pairs but they should kind of you know i would i believe stick to themselves and stick to their territory the pair and probably start building this or probably they already have it built you know and and start their nesting really you know uh, at this point uh like you know incubating and and uh rearing chicks and all that so so to me it was quite surprising to see them in the larger group like this one uh, because at this point I would think that they would stick to, to more to their pairs you know so you would see uh, two of them you know only and usually that's what I see uh, these days only a pair flying around you know so that was interesting um, and yeah and I digressed a lot as usual so we squeezed in three different topics and I moved between them <laughs> it's a classic me oh by the way look at that oh by the way that was a, wow okay okay so there is a hold on let me position the camera so you can see properly so there is a uh, there is this uh, spot that like I covered in one of those videos 
uh, with the with the J which was torn up and we found that little beak uh, the, the the upper mandible of it so this what happened here is something similar and it appears it it appears it was a excuse me I didn't take my I didn't take my um, I'm not taking the napkins again god damn it and I really need to hold on let me let me take a leaf and use the leaf hold on <coughs> ah, okay all right yeah leaves work too so <laughs> if you don't have napkins um so this looks like a was a um it was a a pigeon uh, those are definitely those are definitely looking right drake what do you say what do you say buddy you sniffing connoisseur what does your uh, senses tell us uh, nothing i guess okay so um this looks like a pigeon to me uh it's like grayish sort of there's no specific pattern you know this definitely looks like a pigeon to me not sure because i haven't seen wood pigeons yet you know but um a friend of mine who's an ornithologist she sent me um uh, uh, a picture uh, and that uh, in the capital city there are already wood pigeons so I believe they could be here too and actually we might have heard one on our walk like two days ago uh, on our trip uh, over the weekend so who knows but it doesn't look like a, a, a wood pigeon to be honest to me it does not look like it, it looks more like a rock pigeon a classic rock pigeon and it was probably most likely killed here or definitely caught and as you can see, as it, as it was dragged away, it was, as it was terrified, it actually pooped. And this is like a sort of a drag mark before it was probably carried away. That is actually, you know, that is, that is my guess. That is sort of my hypothesis as I, as I see this sort of quote unquote crime scene. This is what I would say that happened. You know, it was like caught up here. This is actually, you see that poop right here it was this was before so this is where it was pinned down it pooped here it was like plucked a little bit and then carried away and it pooped a little bit while it was carried out and probably ended up as a someone's dinner most likely a uh, either a goshawk or or yeah most likely a goshawk that's what i would imagine because because uh, uh, pigeons are uh, a large part of their diet um, so that was, uh, yeah, that was, uh, something you come across in the forests quite often when you walk, when you walk through them and, and you see those spots, um, sometimes it's interesting to stop by and see and try to sort of, uh, determine what, uh, what animal was it, uh, what, what species was it, you know, who was caught. Um, I, I often do that. Sometimes you can figure, you can see and and find out that it was a bird that you, for instance, didn't know that lives in in that area. You know, sometimes it can be an interesting indicator. So this right here, this uh, this uh, creek, you know, that's the one that comes from that field. You know, and here it looks pretty nice, I would say. But unfortunately, I, have, I think if we would have to do an analysis of that water, I am afraid it would not be a particular positive one. Um, and it sucks, yeah, it sucks. But I mean, yeah, the, the best thing to do, and that would be on the, um, on the farmers, uh, but you wouldn't, stop, you wouldn't stop the chemicals from getting into the ground anyway. And, and getting into the groundwater you know the fact that it's in the water itself that's bad but even if it would do even if you would not plow that part or it, you wouldn't put it uh, put the chemicals in that part right, right there and just like uh just like let, like left it leave it out of your sort of fertilizing pattern it would still get in the in the in the ground it would still get into the groundwater and eventually end up in in the stream you know so there's really no i don't know what would be the solution there i don't know but it sucks yeah because 
it's a source of water for, for local wildlife and now it's contaminated with that crap, you know. Um, so yeah, so uh, that's why I don't really, I'm not really fond of going through fields on our walks. Always rather take the route through the meadows and forest. Oh, but hopefully one day it's gonna be better connected, this path in general. You know, there used to be, as you can see, there's an old sign. Sometimes you can find them on, on, on some trees and it, that's an old touristic sign that there was actually a track leading through here which had to be connected with our village so there was a path at certain point but it must have been like 40 50 years back you know nowadays there is really no one coming here see there's actually here there's a there is a hmm, an arrow and it actually says something but unfortunately underneath there is a there used to be a text but it's unreadable at this point so so yeah that's an interesting thing about this part is that there used to be actually a tourist track so people used to traverse through here and i'm pretty sure since you have these border stones oh shit there are some animals Wow, hear that? That sounded like a large grub, probably deer. Okay. Sorry guys, we spooked you. Wow. Wow. Yeah, sorry guys, we didn't mean to. I didn't mean to spook you. Yeah. So, uh, you know, those old border stones, you can see those stones here as well. It kind of looks to me like an old road. You know, this whole part looks to me like an old road. Even the stones, they're like positioned kind of by the edge of it. So, and, and the fact the the old border stones are here, I believe there used to be an old road that might have connected the village from over there you know and there was you know there was a road that was passable for horse carriages and and such you know but then you know at a certain point there was a a field was created in there and and this was abandoned this path and and it overgrown with with trees and and now it's uh now it's like rewilded rewilded sort of so yeah I'm not sure if that's the term for it but you know nature took back what what is uh, what is hers <laughs> which is great I love it I love that it's like wild in here we've got a nut hatch calling from up from our left sounds like a I said it sounds like a Morse code when you hear that, that is, uh, that is a nut hatch. Uh, and yeah, we're by the end of our walk. Ooh, ah, I see. There was, there's a lot of activity here. So probably they were foraging here and they, oh, there's another one or another smaller group running away. Yeah, it's deer. They're foraging here. Apparently there's a lot of activity. So they were foraging and heard us coming so they ran away anyways we're right by the end of the walk now we're gonna walk by the old border stone which is quite likely from around 1669 so it's pretty old which is which was owned by i mean the border stone but the whole forest here was owned by the knights of the cross with the red star as you can see the, the symbol there and uh, yeah, that is, that has been today's walk. Ah, tomorrow we're gonna take, a, again, our usual route. Oh, there's a deer. Wow, look at that. See them? It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, perhaps. Wow, there's a lot of deer here. Yeah, they like these parts. Dreku neche, neche. 
Tady jdeme, pojď. I'm just telling Drake to leave him alone. Ach, no, hodný. Good. All right, so, um, so yeah. Some, sometimes we, sometimes we're gonna take this route and uh, explore it. We're also gonna go. Oh, yeah, smell a. Oh, it almost smells like a boar. Maybe they're hidden in these brambles here, you know, laying low. I mean, there are more animals than we think. They actually do love this part. This this entire region that is like the opposite of our house. They love it, you know. I guess because nobody really walks through here at all. So maybe they that's why they prefer it here. And also there's the source of water. So probably that's why they kind of congregate uh, in this part. Because they have source of water they are left alone largely and yeah i guess they have a good source of food here as well by the way there's a call and it's awesome that we hear it right at the end it's gonna be a beautiful outro to our video but there is a song hear that that one And it's amazing because that one, it's for one uncommon bird, you know, uh, I, would, I would even say rare bird around, well, generally in, 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 in Czech Republic, but I think generally you don't hear it as often. You do hear skylarks, you know, which are, it's, it's a very common bird in a, in sort of like meadow farmland area, you know, on like fields and you hear them often. But this is a woodlark. And it's a bird that I only hear heard on probably three different occasions in almost eight years, you know, and one of those locations is here and I hear him here every year, you know, but it's a bird that I've, n I, I was not coming across at all on my walks. Uh, sorry, on, on where anywhere, really, wherever I went, I like, that's not a bird you usually hear, you know, and here it's a, it's a common visitor and it definitely nests here. And it seems like it arrived just freshly because this is the first time I'm hearing it. So it must have arrived today, really, or yesterday. From its winter, uh, from its wintering grounds, and it has this beautiful, kind of sad song. And it, as as a skylark, as a lark, it's singing up not from up up a tree, not from up a you know from a shrub or something. It sings from very high up while it flies. So it sings from the air actually and that's how you're gonna also recognize it now it's right above us somewhere hear that there's a bit of a rumble there some noise this yeah that and that's how you're gonna recognize it it's a very specific song really nothing I it's really nothing like I like any other song out there from any other species, you know, it's very specific and it is very specific and the, the thing that will tell you, okay, this is a woodlark is that it's coming from the sky. It, it's not coming from a tree. It's coming from high up somewhere. If you don't, if you don't have very sharp sight, it's very hard to find. I don't see it. It's somewhere flying up on the, in the air and it is singing while it flies you know and that's what's what that's what larks do it's skylark or woodlark that's what they do they sing up from from the air while they're fly and um one possibly similar song that you can hear is uh, one similar song that you can hear is coming from a pipit you know pipits do have a similar songs but they do not sing they, they very often sing when they're sitting 
somewhere like on top of I know treetops or or, or 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 fence posts and some of them they do sing like when they they kind of fly up and then they sing and then they, as they descend their song descends uh, with them you know it's like a very distinct like, like and it's like it's a very specific song but this is coming always from the sky it doesn't descend it doesn't you know it's just coming from the sky and it stays there you know so that's what's gonna tell you that is a wood lark or or lark you know it could be a skylark but skylark has a very different song you know and pipit we're definitely gonna hear it too pipit kind of have a similar kind of similar song but it's 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 different and it's coming from different sort of um uh uh the different constellations so to speak you know it usually sits on a treetop then flies up sings and as it falls down as it, as it descends it sings and then it lands on that treetop and you're gonna see it you're gonna see that bird you're gonna see it on the treetop and you're gonna see how it flies up and descends and so that so on but skylark and and woodlark it's coming out from somewhere up in the air and you don't see it usually because it's very high up it's a small bird and it continues and it continues and it continues the same song over and over again and i'm gonna stop talking now so you can hear it one more time that's that that it's kind of like it has this descending Pew, 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 you know kind of stars a little high and it goes lower you know you know and I still can't see it it's somewhere up in the air you know so that is a woodlark and it was a beautiful sort of um, ending to our video and uh, I'm probably gonna take this piece of whatever that is a plastic that i found right here and throw it in the trash can and i'm gonna sign off so that was a beautiful ending and i'm really very glad we came across this bird because it's really uncommon and i would even say rare and and you don't hear it at often as often at all you know with lark so that was a beautiful beautiful sighting today anyways i'm signing off